Hey everyone, welcome back. So this video today is going to be all about throwing a couple of citrus juicers. So it's throwing it really in one piece and then adding texture when it is leather hard. In, in this video, I show a couple different ways that you can make like vertical textures. There's lots of different ways that people will texture citrus juicer, juicers to get them to work. But um, this way, I, I show a, a couple of them uh, in the video. Now, if you're watching this and you see the wheel that I'm using, you're probably gonna be saying, what wheel is she using? Because I have not used this wheel in a while. I actually forgot that I had this video on my phone and so I pulled it out. It's many months old and that was my old Thomas Stewart kick wheel that I used when I shot this. So anymore you will see like in the new video series I'm using my new beautiful scut wheel. So this one is a little bit older but it still teaches the the good information about making the juicer. Now I would show you what the juicers look like right now except I seem to have lost them. I don't know if any of you misplace your stuff. I feel like I'm fairly organized, but Lord knows where I have ended up by putting those. I don't even remember if I glazed them. I just can't seem to find them anywhere. So when I do find them, I will show you how I glaze them and how I fire them so we can see a final result together. So I hope you enjoy this. Drop me any questions that you might have below. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out my Google Doc for more information on uh, maybe different tools and materials that I have as recommend recommendations. You will find the link in the video description. And if you're on a mobile device, you might need to go to the little toggle down menu that's there by the title. There's a toggle down menu where you can get to the video description so you can find my link that I'm talking about. So uh, good luck and keep potting if you can. So I'm starting out here using a two pound hunk and I did wet down my bat a little bit because this is a wooden bat system from Batman. Uh, in Canada, there are some great bat systems like this. I am uh, doing the coning process where I'm coning it about three times before I finally do the hockey puck to center it. And now I'm going to leave a little raised part in the middle. So this is as if I'm throwing, say, a chip and dip where I'm leaving it raised in the middle. And then that centered part in the middle, I drop all the way to the bat. And that is going to be the little dome in the center that's going to be the juicer part. Now, I want to concentrate right down there at the base of the wall to make sure that that's thin enough. You don't want to leave that too thick. If it's too thick, it can cause uneven drying and cracking. And then I'm throwing this basically as if I were throwing a teapot spout. And I'm tapering it in. And again, just trying to make sure that that clay is even bottom to top. And then as I close it off here, I'm going to add a little bit of scoring. It might not be necessary, but I like to do that. And then I can pinch it closed. Now to uh, do the outside here, I'm just going to really smooth that because I am going to be carving. And if I have it with a smooth surface, um, it makes it a little bit easier to get that carved texture in there. And now for the outside of it, the tray portion, I'm just going to throw that into more of a, a kind of a short bowl uh, because I want it to be able to collect all the juice. And then lastly, I'm going to be uh, putting a spout on there, a pouring spout. So that will be something similar. Oh, and I'm just trimming away some of the excess at the bottom because this will not have a trimmed foot. Now here's the spout. Uh, just as if I were doing a pitcher spout, just kind of uh, giving it a place where it can easily pour out instead of just dribbling all over the place. And then I'm going to cut this with a cutoff wire. Even though it is on wood, I still like to cut them so they, um, they shrink uh, nicely. Okay. So here are both of them. You can see the size difference. The one on the right was one and a half pounds. One on the left is two pounds. I do confess that the very uh, base right there is a little thin on the two pound one. Um, I, I think I just pushed it down a little bit too far. If I can uh, hopefully dry it slowly, it'll hopefully make it through the drying process. So I'm gonna let these get leather hard and I'll come back and I'll do some carving. 
Now after these have dried for a day or so, then I'm ready for the next step. I just rewire it to remove it from the, uh, the little wooden bat and they are nicely leather hard. Now at this point, I'm going to kind of lay out the designs. I'm going to show you two different ways to put the texture on there, uh, but in either case, I lay it out first. Now I'm using a ribbon tool. This is one of the rectangular ended ribbon tools, and I'm holding it to create kind of a, a V, um, an upside down V. I'm trying to create a point on a ridge, and uh, that little ribbon tool is a nice little way it's removing the clay. Um, it will get cleaned up after the carving though because it it's going to have you know a little bit of a bump uh, bumpy texture as you can see there so my goal is to try to make v grooves and have ridges because i really want it to be able to um, kind of get up inside of the fruit when i'm juicing it so i'm just going to take a few minutes and i'm filling in some of the 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 more blank areas with more of the texture. And now that is what it looks like. It's a little bit rough, but again, that's going to be cleaned. And on the other one, I'm going to be not cutting but pressing the texture. So I'm just trying to show two different approaches to this. For this one, I'm just using a rib and I'm taking the rib and kind of um, just tilting it a little bit to either side to again create a V sort of a groove on this. And uh, again, I laid it out first to try to get it evenly spaced. Now, this is a wooden tool. I want to slow down this a little bit so you can see the wooden tool that I'm talking about. Again, this is just one of those Kemper wooden tools. Um, and I'm just using the rounded end to press the texture on either side of that, that V ridge that I'm trying to get. So I'm not actually removing clay, I'm just pressing it. And here I'm just speeding it along a little bit more. Um, you can see that uh, I'm using the rib and the wooden tool. It, it is making some little messy marks, but now we're at the cleaning stage. So I'm tidying up the texture with a wet, stiff bristled paintbrush, and I'm doing that on the first one as well, the carved one. And once I have the texture cleaned up, now I'm just going to clean up the exterior bottom just with a rib, taking off any little extra uh, clay on the interior of that hole. I'm just using that wood tool because my rib is a little bit fat to go up inside of that hole. And of course I could also use say a wet brush or wet a damp sponge on the bottom if I needed to. And you can see uh, where the clay was joined up in there. You could even take and like smooth it out like I'm just taking the little tool and smoothing out where um, I could still see like a little crease or a crack up in there. And then I'm going to stamp that and sign it. And that one is ready for drying. And I'll do the exact same thing with the one that had the pressed texture, cleaning up the bottom, uh, looking up inside the hole, seeing if I need to uh, kind of smooth anything up inside the hole. I think I do like the two pound one a little bit better than the one and a half pound size. Um, and then I will lay a heavy towel over these to dry them slowly.